mai i pōtiki rua ki te toka a taiau. Tau ana ki a tūranga tangata rite, rere iho ki ngā tukemata o kahungunu, ngā reo irirangi o te rāwhiti. For the beverage that tickles the taste buds, there's no other drink leading the way like Kapu Tai Rāwhiti. Your leading news source of infotainment brought to you by Tūranga FM Radio Ngātipra and Radio Kahungunu. Now, speaking of leaders, there have been some great leaders here in Aotearoa over the years, from the likes of All Blacks captain Buck Shalford, World Cup winner Casey Korpua, former corporal and Victoria Cross recipient Willie Apiata, and of course, not forgetting the most important one, YMP coach Kahu Tamatea. Being a leader is a tough job. E mea ana kue here. Now, earlier today, the Labour leader and Prime Minister of Aotearoa, the Right Honourable Chris Hipkins, came to visit Rahi and I at Te Reo Irirangi o Tūranganui Akiwa. It's the perfect time to talk over the biggest issues in politics, but also find out a little bit more about the person that is Chris Hipkins. Kia mā takitaki a ke tātou. No mai hoki mai e tiwi, well unless you've been living under a rock you will know that we are a couple of weeks out from the general election. Hioi i tēnei ata, nō tātou te whiwhi te waimarie, whaimuri i tana tautohe atu kia Christopher Luxon i te pōra. We're joined in studio by our Prime Minister and Labour Leader, the Right Honourable Chris Hipkins. Morena Prime Minister. Kia ora. Lovely to have you here in Tūranganui Aki, well nice to have you in the studio. I have to say it feels a little bit surreal having watched you on the leaders debate last night and now you're here with Rahi and I in the Turang FM studio. First question has to be, Kei te ahakui tēnei ata, how are you? I'm really good actually, I'm feeling really energised by the election campaign, you know, it's good to be here in Gisborne, the sun is shining brightly and that always helps to lift <laughs> anybody's mood, but uh, yeah, it's good to be out and about talking to people and, um, you know, hearing about their hopes and aspirations for the country and the sorts of things that they want us to be focused on and mm. that's always pretty energising. Yeah, speaking of energising, I um, have to ask you, how many hours sleep have you had considering you had the big debate last night. Yeah, last night probably wasn't a good indication of the amount of sleep I'm getting because those big debates take a wee bit of winding down afterwards mm. um, from doing that. So I didn't get a lot of sleep last night and early start to be here in, in Gizzy today, but generally trying to get sort of six or seven hours of sleep each night. Yeah. That's good. That's pretty good. Because yeah. we asked Jacinda the same question last year and she had six and yeah. we were yeah, surprised by that as well because you guys, you know, you're fairly busy. You're yeah. running a country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Prime Minister, lots of media analysing this morning, uh, your performance last night. One even said you lacked a little bit of mongrel. Um, how do you think you went? Look, I think it was a good debate. I am I'm, I'm, I don't like talking over people and interrupting people. I think that's actually just being a good person, yeah. really. And I'm not going to stop being a good person just because I'm a politician. Um, you know, I, I think um, the debate canvassed a lot of issues that I hope, you know, New Zealanders will feel a bit more informed about when they make their decisions about how they're going to vote. Mm. I felt that too. I thought, you know, he, he must be just waiting for... Chris Luxon to finish because we do that as well and it is you know courtesy it's courtesy. courtesy yeah so yeah because you know a lot of people were coming down on you on that and I thought no he's just waiting for him to finish well in many cases I was also waiting for him to answer the question which um, <laughs> he's, he seems to say use a lot of words to not answer a question but uh, you know good on him <laughs> yeah yeah uh, Prime Minister we, we noted that you both have folders so can we ask what, what are on those folders have you got the statistics that just in case you need to reference them or because ah, you guys know everything yeah. yeah there are a lot of facts and figures in there but actually most of the stuff that I referred to was stuff that I'd written down that afternoon literally handwritten down of kind of the main points that I wanted to make in mm. the debate. So mm. they, they were actually the main bits that I was referring to. Mm. Kapai. Um, let's talk about your visit to Tūranga. What brings you here? Uh, I'm here... Um I guess for two reasons. It's an election. Uh, there's an election on, so uh, campaigning. I'm here to support um, uh, Tamati and Kushler, our candidates in, in this area, and to give them as much support as I can, um, because I think they're both excellent advocates for the area, and I think they'll um, both be um, fantastic representatives in the next parliament. Mm. So I want to be able to support them to do that. But it's also an opportunity to touch base and just see how things are going with the cyclone recovery. You know, I was here... Literally within days, I think it was, of, it, of yeah. being Prime Minister, mm -hmm. um, saw the damage that had happened as a result of the cyclone, knew then that it was going to be a big job to do the clean up and to get everything you know, back on, everyone back on their feet again after the cyclone. So I've been a regular visitor back you know, in the period of time since then, and it's, it's, whenever I'm here, it's good to just check in on and see how things are going. Yeah, because I think one of the sentiments from our people here on the ground, particularly our whanau at Te Karaka, that were adversely affected by uh, the floods was, don't forget us. Eh? Yeah, we're absolutely not forgetting them. And, um, you know, it, it, 
we've got to make sure that we're getting the right answer for them. Um, the, those sorts of things take some time. You know, we've worked through the issues around buyouts for the most severely affected areas, and we've done that with the local councils. Rather than rather than sort of charging on in over the top of the local councils and saying, right, we're taking over, we're going to do everything from here, we've actually tried to work with the local councils um, to make sure that the community still feels empowered by the response to the cyclone. And that means that things are a little slower and sometimes a little bit less certain in the beginning. But yeah. actually, I think we'll get a better outcome from doing it that way. Mm. Mm. Um, speaking of um, outcomes, in terms of uh, your ministerial colleague, uh, Penny Hennady, uh, was here recently and presenting the report, the findings of the slash report, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't received as warmly as what he had hoped. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the slash cleanup is underway, and I think people will see evidence of the fact that, you know, the cleanup from, from, for, of, of all the slash is underway now, and that funding is ongoing, so there's more funding well into next year to continue that cleanup effort. And if it requires more after that, then, you know, there'll be some discussions about how we best do that, because there's no question we've got to clean it up. But then we've actually got to start dealing with the fact that this could happen again if mm -hmm. we don't change the way we're managing our forestry. Yeah. Um, we've got to think about where we're planting um, natives versus exotics. You know, there are some areas where we're currently planting pine trees where we shouldn't be. Um, and I think Hekia Parata's report made that pretty clear and laid that out for everyone to see. And I, I thought the findings in that report were actually really good. Mm. Um, Prime Minister, if you are elected again as Prime Minister with Labour government, what are some of the, the things that you will do to help improve our, our region to Tairawhiti? I'm really proud of the investments that we've made through things like the Shovel Ready funding and the Provincial Growth Fund, which are community initiatives, so they're things that are helping the local community here. Um, we're, as part of the cyclone recovery, we're really focused on building more resilient transport links here into the East Coast, because um, it's just not sustainable or, or acceptable, really, that with a severe weather event like the cyclone, that you could be cut off for as long as you were cut off for. Mm -hmm. um, I was here, I think, on the day the first convoy of trucks came through. That's right. And I know exactly how, yeah, how much work went into just getting basic supplies in and out of the area in that first period. We've got to build more resilient roads. So that's a big priority for us, making sure we continue those local investments. But then also... I think, you know, the Tairawhiti area, same as every other part of the country, wants to know that we're focused on the cost of living, taking GST off fruit and vegetables, making, um, you know, dental care free for their under 30s, taking the $5, taking away the $5 prescription co-payment so that mm. people can actually afford to get the medicines that they need. You know, all of these things, I think, will make a difference and make families better off. Mm -hmm. The polls aren't that good for Labour at the moment. Is it because, do you think it's because of lots of people aren't happy with the country at the moment, or do you even believe in polls? Um, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm cynical but accepting of, of polls. Uh, the, some of the polls before the last election would suggest there was going to be quite a different result to the one that we actually got on the night. Um, but the the reality is, you know, um, we're not polling at the sort of level that we want to be polling at. The country's been through a pretty tough period, you know, with um, cyclones, with the pandemics, um, with the pandemic mm -hmm. and everything like that. And that creates a bit of a mood for change. And mm -hmm. my real message to New Zealanders is think about what kind of change you could get if you vote for change. You know, do you really want a government that's going to cut government spending, cut um, thousands of jobs? Uh, out of the public service, and including in the regions where we've seen an increase in the number of public service jobs in the last six years, those jobs that could be cut, you know, mm. under a, a, a future national government. Uh, and then, you know, do, do we want to see um, foreign home buyers prioritised over Kiwi first home buyers in the housing market? These are the sorts of things that I think are at stake. You know, the the things that I just mentioned, like free prescriptions and. Uh, and and so on, free early childhood education for two-year-olds. These are things that our government's doing that the other side have said that if they get into government, they're going to cut them. Okay. Why don't you ask him about his favourite karaoke song? Because okay. we've got some breakfast organised. Yeah, because we usually do karaoke here on the Tūrunga Half Parakuihi show, so we like to do um, a few Māori songs. But what, you know, if... You, do you do karaoke, first of all? I don't really do karaoke. I don't I think you have time. I, I haven't had time to do that for, for many a year. Um, but what if you could choose a karaoke song, what would it be? Uh, well, I think if you're going to sing karaoke, if you sing like me, you need to be singing with others. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I Got You Babe by Sunny and Cher makes a, a great duet. And it means that you've got someone else to share the embarrassment with. No, yeah, I love that. As we um, talk, we have some food in here for you because we know that Holy you're very busy, moly. Prime Minister. Oh, little hot dogs. <laughs> Oh, look, this is the oh, best breakfast ever. <laughs> so we, um, so Matai organised you a little 
breakfast because no doubt you um, get hungry. But also, um, you know, oh, when... Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> How yeah, many of a... me do you think there is? There's just, you know, because we know you come with a posse. Well, yeah, we know you've got, you know, you've got your entourage. Hey, we are so lucky because Paul Rickard is in the fuddy. He is our, you know, photographer from Gisborne. You know, that's a big copa when Paul Rickard's yep. in, the, in the fuddy. <laughs> How much time do you spend with you? Because given you're running the country... Uh, it's pretty tough at the moment. I'm sort of seeing them about once a week at the moment. And, wow. you know, that that's, uh, yeah, that I, I don't like that. Um, um, but it is what it is at the moment. And it's only another three and a half weeks and then the campaign's over and then they'll get to see a bit more of me. So, mm-hmm. How old are they? Uh, my uh, daughter actually turned five yesterday. And, oh, uh, oh, happy birthday. What's her name, Prime Minister? Isabel. Hari huringa tau Isabel. Yeah, and my son, Charlie, he turns uh, seven uh, the week after the election. So... I'll be there for his birthday. Oh, see, and this, this is the stuff we don't know. You, you know, you're compromising your time and your family time um, to campaign and to, you know, be on um, debates like last night. And we don't know that side of you. So, I mean, five years old, my son's five next year, so I couldn't even imagine um, missing out on time. It actually made me a little bit sad. Yeah. So, yeah, happy birthday to your daughter. Well, we're having another little party for her on Friday night. When oh, I'm, when when I'm back you're home. Back. Uh, I'm back home for a couple of nights over the weekend, so we're going to have a little party for her on Friday night. Thank you so much. Ko pauka tō te wahanga kia tato. We really, really appreciate, um, particularly after the big night with the leaders' debate last night, you coming to Tūranga Nui Akiwa. Um, all the best for the election. Um, you. you know, te marino, ke mi te moana, ke te karohirohi. May the calm be widespread. Um, may the sea glisten like greenstone, and may the shimmer of Tairafiti summer dance across your pathway as you lead up to the elections uh, on October the fourteenth. Same day as the AMP show. Yeah, where they do really nice Gisborne. hot dogs there yeah. too. <laughs> Speaking good. of hot dogs, let's <laughs> indulge. Come on, we He's such a lovely man, Chris Hipkins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, Etefano, the pending election, October the fourteenth. It's a couple of Saturdays away, same day as the AMP show here in Tūranga Nui Akiwa, but it is very important that you have your say. So if you have not yet registered as a voter, and you can because you're 18 years or over, there's the website. And we are nowhere. Tomorrow in Kapitai Rafati, we look at the Fakani based on the famous Patricia Grace book, Te Kuiya Me Te Pūngā Werewere. Te Pai Rāne Ki Akwe Ngā Pūngā Werewere. No. Gizzi cockroaches, eh? Oh, gizzi cockroaches. Mūtunga mai o te anu anu. Werewere. Yeah, they never die. <laughs> Hoi anō, we'll spin that story your way tomorrow, but until then, hei kona. Hey nah, seriously, Here's you can go. <laughs> Pērā and kei te ore ore tonu. <laughs> Radio Ngāti Poro, Radio Kahungunu, Tūranga FM, Kaputi me ngā irirangi o te rāwhiti.